Cliffhanger is the awesome 90s movie that follows the Rocky Mountain Rescue Team, and it shows how fearless rock climbers are, and it also shows how insane rock climbers are. I mean, look at that. Just truly psychotic people. Sylvester Stallone plays Gabe Walker, and seriously, what the hell? So Gabe and his girlfriend Jesse and Jesse's grandpa Frank are going to rescue their colleague Hal Tucker and his girlfriend who are stranded in just the most dangerous, inhospitable, tiny little platform I've ever seen. And they need assistance because Hal hurt his knee. Gabe, Hal's signaling he's okay. I can think of few places on Earth that are less okay than that spot that they're on right now. They couldn't lower Gabe to the spot from the helicopter because the wind is too strong. This is the safe option. They can't pull them out with a winch either because it's too dangerous, so they decide to attach a cable from the helicopter to the cliff that they're on so they can shimmy across a 4,000 foot chasm to where the helicopter has landed. And like, look how close the helicopter is anyways. I'd be more worried about the wind from the blades flinging me to a horrifying death. I would just be screaming, fly away before you kill us all! Okay, so how are you gonna attach this line? Are you gonna drill an eye bolt about six feet into the rock or something? Are you freaking kidding me? It literally just made the sound dink, dink, dink. He didn't even tap it all the way in. Like, screw that, I'm taking my chances with the helicopter. It can fling me around like a rag doll for a few minutes until we get on solid ground. What do you say? We take off and leave this cloud behind. Please be advised that Ranger Walker is making advances toward my girlfriend. This liable to get his ass kicked right off this mountain over. Be informed, Gabe, he makes advances to me only, or he'll be climbing down 4,000 feet and sleeping outside. Baby, he lies. If I was on that mountain, I would be like, how are we all so calm right now? Can we stop f***ing around, please? I want to go home. And this would be while I was just panic vomiting all over everything because I keep accidentally looking down. Hal makes it across with no problems, but when Sarah goes out, her strap breaks and she slips down. It's a... ah! I'm ah! Don't you lose again! Uh, Frank, why are you smiling, buddy? Frank's probably thinking about a beef and noodles plate of Bob Evans or something. And despite a valiant effort, Sarah reaches the inevitable conclusion for every mountain climber and she falls to her death. Oh, and I had to watch this scene like five times to prepare for this video. It is rough. I mean, they follow her down for a while. So after a light breezy opening showing all the dangers of mountain climbing, we then jump forward eight months so that our main characters, while still sad and troubled, aren't completely in the throes of uncontrollable grief. And that is right in that sweet spot of where you want your heroes to be emotionally in a summer blockbuster. So Gabe's been living in Denver for eight months because he couldn't face his friends anymore. And he comes back and is greeted by the Mountain Dew Extreme twins. Um, I don't have their names in front of me, so we will call them Scooch and Grimes. We like it extreme. Hey man. See you later, Gabe. Good to have you back. Aw, oh, but they're good kids. Just a little extreme is all. Gabe came back to bring Jesse to Denver with him, but she wants him to stay and stop running from the past. Got yourself a new horse? Uh, yeah, my last several fell off a mountain. We then meet United States Treasury agent Travers as he's preparing to transport $100 million in uncirculated bills by plane. But we soon learn that Travers is working with a group of international thieves to steal the money. They attach a cable between planes to load the money, but one of the agents is still alive, and he opens fire on the thieves' plane. He's hurt bad. What should we do with him? Get him to a hospital. Fast. Oh, wow. It's an exact representation of the United States healthcare system. hi -o! The treasury plane explodes and the cases break free and fall to earth. The hydraulics go out on the thieves' plane and they have to crash land in the mountains. Bet they wish they would have kept the wounded guy around so they can eat him. Situation is pretty bleak, but luckily this is the best crew that money can buy. Luckily for them, there's not a wild card in the bunch. The wild card can also be known as the loose cannon, and this individual is unpredictable, overly violent, and prone to just react with zero regard for the consequences. Heists aren't usually successful with a wild card around. This particular heist was orchestrated by Eric Quaylen, who was a former military intelligence operative, and he's played by the fantastic John Lithgow, who, like Kelsey Grammer, I thought was British for just the longest time. Turns out they're both just big theater nerds. Also, I learned that Christopher Walken was initially cast as Eric Quaylen, and John Lithgow is amazing and all, but 
Can you imagine Christopher Walken? We're joined at the hip. We're partners in crime. They send out a call to the Rocky Mountain Rescue for help, claiming to be five stranded hikers. And Hal is already on his way, and Jesse wants Gabe to help, but he doesn't have it in him anymore. But if you don't do this now, you're going to be stuck on that ledge for the rest of your life. So you need to pull yourself together and climb that ledge, and most likely fall off that ledge. That's mountain climbing. Gabe finally decides to help and somehow manages to beat Hal up the mountain. Hal and Gabe make it to the crash site and they're led at gunpoint to the location of the first case. Where's the next one? It's on the tower. How far? <laughs> the ask how far, goddammit! All right, Travers. God, take it down about a thousand notches. Yo! Hatch! Fast! Oh my god. Damn it. Made me spill my cocoa. Inside man and wild card. Interesting. They send Gabe up the cliff without his jacket to get the first case. And they plan to kill him when he comes down, but Hal tries to warn him. And so Heldon just opens fire on the ledge above and causes an avalanche. Okay. So they believe that Gabe is dead, so they set off for the second case. Jesse feels that something isn't right and goes to look for him, and Gabe finds her in an old mining cabin and they gear up to go to the second case before Quaylen does. Gabe and Jesse find the second case, and when Quaylen and his crew get there, all that's left is a single thousand dollar bill. You know what bro? I wouldn't even want a hundred million dollars. Let me take that thousand dollars and invest it into myself and into a new business idea, and I'll generate ten times that amount for myself and my employees. ABH. Always be hustling. So if I was being hunted by maniacs, I would not take the time to build a snowman to taunt them. I would be barely coherent from fear and just whisper shrieking for Jesse to hurry up already. Oh my god, I think they're right behind us. Go, 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 go! I wasn't bolting until I'm a mountain. Come on. Maybe this ah, boy whoa. should make big mouth a little bigger. Okay, come on. There are just far too many wild cards on this crew. Sophisticated men like Quaylen need a gentlemanly crew. Gabe and Jesse burn the $30 million for warmth, and everyone settles in for the night, including Griff and Squeeb. So the next morning, they all make their way to the last case, and they are now only going after about $30 million, and divided amongst the six remaining crew, that's only about $5 million per person. And that's only considering they would all get an equal share, which, you know Quaylen's getting a bigger cut, so they all have to be planning a Reservoir Dog-style ambush slash standoff later. And there's going to be a lot of killing and double crossing because everyone wants the money all to themselves. And man, people are way too greedy. Give me 250000 and a 2012 Kia Sportage and you will never see me again. So Hal and the Thieves come across Bodhi and Taj. And they open fire and they kill Pud. But luckily, Topher manages to parachute off the cliff, but he gets stuck in a tree. Kill a few people, they call you a murderer. Kill a million and you're a conqueror. Are you trying to conquer the X Games? Hal is taking them the long way around, so Gabe and Jesse decide to go through the mountain in order to beat them there. And Frank gets worried because no one has checked in, so he takes the helicopter, and he finds... Kyle? But with a C and an I? And, oh my god, you don't have to put him out of his misery! Oh, okay, that, that makes more sense. Gabe and Jesse make it out of the cave, but Kinnett is there waiting for him. Kinnett drops down and starts beating the living hell out of Walker, until Walker cleans that jerk right into a stalactite. Ooh, wait, no, I got one better. Now that's what I call a deadlift. You kidding? Oh God. Hey, yeah, a little bit of his blood got in my mouth. I'm gonna have to get that checked out. And also, do you wanna know how to tell the difference between a stalactite and a stalagmite? Well, here's an easy way to remember. Kinnett stalagmite fall to the ground if this were in fact a stalagmite, which it's not, so we will have to hang tight, stalactite that is, except in the southern hemisphere where the whole thing is reversed. Hope that clears everything up. So they trick Frank into landing and... You stupid maniac! No one told you to shoot! We've wasted enough time. And I've got to say, as a kid and still today, the death of Sarah and Frank and the death of... Weem? Really bothered me. I should do a video of all the movie deaths that scarred me when I was a little kid. And that video would be like eight hours long. So now that they have a helicopter, Travers wants to use it to fly to the next case and get out of there. 
but Crystal informs them that there's only enough fuel to get off the mountain. Things begin to break down when Travers pulls a gun on Quaylen, knowing that Quaylen will kill him as soon as he gets the money. Quaylen then pulls a gun on the helicopter pilot, but this is all for show. Surely she'll be fine. What are you doing here, Rick? Mastermind slash wildcard. Unprecedented. Quaylen sends Travers and Delmar to watch Hal retrieve the third case while he waits at the helicopter. And Jesse heads back to town to radio for help while Gabe goes to find the third case. And when Travers gets close, he sends Delmar to dispose of Hal. You like soccer? It's a great sport. A lovely little chip shot. Moves to his left. Draws back his foot. He comes in. But Hal finds the only way to get a soccer fan to stop talking about soccer, and he goes after Travers. Travers makes his way to the location of the last case, but finds that Gabe is some kind of lightning-fast wizard because he attached the tracker to a rabbit. I can't even catch my cat if he doesn't want to be caught. And I'm the one that feeds him. I've never been able to get within 20 feet of a wild rabbit. Travers being wild card number one, then blasts the whole plan on an open channel that the other treasury agents are monitoring. It's Walker. The son of a bitch is still alive, Quaylen. They beat us. A couple of f***ing mountain rangers. Jesus Christ, it's Travers. Travers, you've lost your mind. I'm on my last official manhunt. It's an odd little tirade because this is no different than what they've been doing for two days. Like, Travers catches up to Walker and the money just a few seconds later. But hey, that's why he's the wild card. It, one of the wild cards. So Walker gets trapped under the ice and shoots Travers with the eye bolt attaching gun, which I was super bummed to find out isn't an actual thing. And Gabe kills Travers and meets up with Hal, but Quaylen finds Jesse and takes her hostage and demands that Gabe climb to the highest point with the money or else he'll kill her. He gets Quaylen to agree to let Jesse go first, and when Quaylen comes back, Gabe chucks the money into the helicopter blades. And if that was me, I would do the exact same thing, except it would be by accident. Gabe then attaches the helicopter to the mountain ladder, and Quaylen and Gabe crash into the side of the cliff and get into a fist fight. Keep your arms and legs in the vehicle! Hello? Man, movies are just setting me up for disappointment. Because if I'm ever in a situation like this, I'm just going to be so keyed up and panicked that I won't be able to say anything, let alone anything cool. It would just be shrieking, followed by frantic haymakers, all the while very aware that I was on a helicopter dangling on the side of a cliff from a hundred-year-old ladder. And forget about hanging from the side of a mountain. No way. I definitely lack the upper body strength for that. Basically, if this was me, I would have died here. Luckily for us, Gabe isn't a weenie from the Midwest, and he clings to the side of the mountain as the helicopter falls the rest of the way and kills Quaylen. And that's why he's called Cliffhanger. Can't hold on much longer. And that was Cliffhanger, the movie that was sandwiched in between the action classic Demolition Man and the comedy classic Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. The 90s were a weird time for Sylvester Stallone. 